Hello, welcome to Zemarie Design. Let's create an adjustable strap boho purse. So let's get started. I begin by cutting my main fabric 16 inches by 16 inches square. I cut two pieces, two pieces of lining and two pieces of fusible interfacing. I'm going to fuse my interfacing to the wrong side of my lining fabric, following my manufacturer's instructions to do that. Once that's done, I'm going to cut out my corners. They're two inches by two inches, and I'll do I'll box those corners later in the project. I'll fold my fabric in half to press the center crease. Down my center crease, I'm going to measure for my magnetic snap and for my pockets. I'll leave a link in the description so you can get a closer look at, um, so you'll know how to insert these magnetic snaps. I measure down that center crease one and a half inches for the magnetic snap three inches for the pocket. To insert my magnetic snap, it comes with a washer with two slits. I'm going to mark those slits right on that center and I'm going to snip them in to insert the prongs on the magnetic snap. I'll do this on both sides of the lining, inserting the prongs making sure to use some interfacing. I'm going to use some repurposed batting. Again, using the washer for the pattern there to create the, the prongs opening. Press them to one side, your magnetic snaps have been, been inserted. Now I've made my pockets off camera and I'm going to put those in the um, three inches down from the center. To make sure that my pockets are center, I'm going to fold them in half and I'm going to crease those down the center with my top stitching at the top. Put it at my three inch mark pinning it in place. I will take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch all the way around the three sides, back stitching at the beginning and the end. And I'm going to top stitch about a quarter of an inch from the edge. I'll do that for both pockets. My pockets have been sewn on, my magnetic snaps have been inserted. I'm going to now put my lining together, right sides facing, making sure to match up my side seams and my bottom seam. I'm going to sew across the side and the bottom. But on the bottom seam, I'm going to leave at least a four to five inch opening so I can turn it right side out. and then sew up the sides. I will also go ahead and sew up my main fabric, making sure to follow my directional fabric, right sides facing, matching up my raw edges, sewing down my side seams, my bottom seams, back stitching at the beginning and the end. And I'm sewing a half inch seam allowance on all of these seams. Once everything has been sewn open, I have my opening at the bottom for my lining. I'm going to press all my seams opening open on my lining and on my main fabric. It makes it easier to box those corners. You're boxing the corners by matching the side seam to the bottom seam. I just put a pin in the bottom seam, make sure it's coming out of the side seam. And then I just continue to pin in place sewing a half inch seam allowance. 
I'm going to pin all four of these corners that same way. And now that my corners have been boxed, I'm going to trim this seam back about a quarter of an inch just to reduce the bulk. Then I turn the main body of the bag right side out, leaving the lining wrong side out. So I'm going to place the main body of the bag inside the lining. And I start by matching my side seams. And it just really is nice when you have those seams pressed open. I match the side seam. I match the center crease marks. And then I will continue to pin all the way around the purse at the top matching the raw edges and I'll sew a half inch seam allowance all the way around. My seam allowance has been sewn. It's time to pull the bag right side out through the lining opening that you've left and just take your time and pull this out making sure to push those box corners out on the lining and on your main body of your bag and then I'm going to turn that seam allowance under that opening matching up the seam allowance and then I'll just take it to the sewing machine and just sew this opening uh, closed you can also do this by hand I'll just do it by machine stitching about an eighth of an inch from the edge now that my opening is uh, sewn closed I will push the main body of the bag inside the, the, the lining of the bag inside the main body of the bag and then I'm going to press that top uh, seam there so that my lining doesn't show through the front. And then I'll top stitch all the way around about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And now it's time to attach our buttons. I measure my buttons about a half inch down from the top. And you're sewing these on the side seams. Both of your buttons are going to be sewn one on each of the side seams. And I'm sewing mine on with embroidery floss just to give it a little bit more um, stability and uh, to make sure that they don't come off. I have both, both of my buttons sewn on. It's time now to prep my handles. I'm going to cut my handles. My strips will be cut at 3 inches. And I want them to be a length of at least 55 inches. It just gives me a good way to uh, add that adjustment. You can make them as long or as short as you like. And I'm also going to use that same fusible interfacing I used on the lining. I'm going to use that on both of the handles and I cut two handles. My fusible interfacing is cut at two inches. And I don't want that fusible interfacing in the seam allowance. So just to help reduce the bulk. So I'm going to fuse my interfacing on all the way down the length of the strap. And I'll do that on both. Now that my fusible has been fused on, I'm going to with right sides facing, making sure to follow my directional fabric. I'm going to pin my straps in place and just once again taking that measurement that it's at least minimum 55 inches long if it's a little longer that's okay but I'm going to pin it all the way down and I'm going to start at the top on one side back stitching at the beginning when I get to the bottom edge I'm, I'm going to sew across and then I'm going to sew up the other side I'll leave one, in, one of those uh, shorter edges, I'll leave it open so I can turn this right side out. So now, I, and I've sew, I sewed a half inch seam allowance. So now that as everything is sewn, I'm going to trim this seam allowance back to about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to trim, trim the corners and trim that seam allowance all the way, all the way around. Now I'm going to turn this right side out. One side is already sewn um, through so I'm going to start at that end and I have this tube turner that I'm going to use. I'm going to press my tube, uh, start my fold to turn it right side out, put my, tool, my tube inside, 
put my other tube inside that one that'll help me to push it through it takes a little bit to get it going but once it gets going it does work you can also just use a skewer you can use the handle of a wooden spoon whatever you have on hand now that it's turned right side out I'm going to give it a good press I'm going to turn under that seam allowance about a, about a half of an inch and I'm going to use a pin to help me pick out the other ends of my seam uh, of that corner just to try to make it as crisp as I possibly can. Turning under my seam allowance. I'm going to pin it in place and then I'll take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch all the way around this uh, this handle about a quarter of an inch from the edge. When I do my top stitching I also increase my stitch length to about a 3.0. Now that my handle has been top stitched I'm going to measure my buttons because now I'm going to make some buttonholes that'll make the shoulder strap adjustable. I'm going to put two buttonholes on each end of my handles. I begin by measuring up at least one inch from the bottom and I'll make a mark with my chalk and I'll do that on both sides and then I'll take the measurement of my button which was one inch. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm marking down the center. I'll fold it just to make sure. Fold it in half. I'm marking it out. I want this buttonhole to be in the center. And in between each buttonhole, I'm going to make sure that they're at least a half inch apart. Now you can add three buttonholes, four buttonholes, as many as you like to make this adjustable to your to, to the length that you like. So that's my half inch. Now I'm going to measure down again a one inch and my buttonholes will be one inch. And so that's four buttonholes all total that I'm going to make on the machine. My buttonholes now have been made on my sewing machine. I'm going to now open those up with my seam ripper. I'm going to put a pin at the top of the buttonhole and then I'll start with the seam ripper uh, at the bottom of one and then I will just seam rip all the way up through the center of the buttonhole but I know I'm not going to go through that buttonhole because the pin is going to stop me. So I know then I won't tear through. I'll open all my buttonholes and I also I put fray check on those buttonholes after I open them up and now my shoulder strap is adjustable and this is what the inside looks like now you can make this this a uh, reversible purse if you like just uh, by not putting the, the magnetic snap on there you can put a button on on that part too in the center or not put any closure on it and it'll be a total reversible adjustable strap for her purse but I really like this project and I hope you give it a try and I will make sure to list these on my Etsy shop and I will leave a link in the description to my Etsy shop so thanks for watching